All right, so today we're building a fully functional SaaS dashboard with homepage, login page, and more using Next.js, Supabase, and Fusion. Something that looks clean, feels fast, and actually works like a real product. Now, what exactly will this dashboard do? Think of it like a control center for your app. Users can sign up, log in, manage their data, and maybe even see stats or analytics about their inventory, customers, or orders, all in one smooth interface. So before we start coding, let's talk a bit about why we're using these three tools. Next.js gives us that perfect balance between speed and simplicity. It's built on React, so we still get the nice component-based workflow. But unlike plain React, Next.js gives us server-side rendering and API routes out of the box meaning we don't need to set up a whole backend from scratch. We can just write our front-end and back-end logic inside one code base. Then there's Supabase. It gives us a PostgreSQL database, built-in authentication, file storage, and even real-time data updates. So things like user sign-up, login, and pulling data from your database, all handled. We just connect it and boom, you've got the core of your app ready. And the third piece is Fusion. This is what ties it all together visually. What makes Fusion really cool is how it bridges Figma to code. You design your UI in Figma, use the Fusion plugin, and instantly get production-ready code that you can plug straight into your project. No more spending hours adjusting paddings or pixel-perfect alignments. Fusion just handles that. So whenever you tweak something, like changing the font, adjusting a layout, or moving a button, you just do it in Fusion. Hit visual changes, and your code updates automatically. It's like your front end is alive, constantly syncing with your design system. This trio makes our process so much faster. Next.js handles routing and performance, Supabase handles authentication and data, and Fusion handles the visual side, keeping everything consistent and smooth. All right, let's jump in and start building. First up, let's create our Next.js app with Supabase already integrated. Open your terminal and type npx and then create Next app. Then dash dash example with dash supabase and then dot slash or the name of your app. Once that's done, you'll see some default pages like the login and protected routes. Let's rename the protected folder to something more fitting. Call it dashboard. Inside our login and signup forms, let's also update the redirect path to slash dashboard. That way, after logging in or signing up, users will be redirected to the dashboard page instead of the old protected page. Now that's done we need to push this project to a GitHub repository, since we'll be connecting it to Fusion. That way, Fusion can directly use this project as our starting template. No need to set up everything from scratch or move files manually. Every update we make in Fusion will stay connected to this template, keeping everything consistent and ready to build on any time. Let's head over to GitHub and create a new repository. Name it whatever you like, then click Create. Now, before we paste any Git commands from GitHub, let's go back to our local terminal. First, type Git in it. This initializes Git in our project folder, basically telling it to start tracking changes. Next, run git add dot. This stage is all the files in our project, meaning Git is now aware of every file we want to include in our first commit. Then type git commit dash m initial commit to local. This saves a snapshot of our project locally, kind of like saying, all right, this is my starting point. After that, we'll connect this local project to the new repository we created on GitHub. Copy those three lines, starting from git branch up to git, push origin main, and then hit enter. This will connect your local project to the GitHub repository and push all your code online. After a few seconds, you can refresh your GitHub page, and you should see all your files uploaded there. That means our project is now safely stored in the cloud, and more importantly, it's ready to be linked with Fusion, so we can start syncing our front-end design straight into the code base without touching imports or manual uploads. Now, let's go to builder.io slash fusion, or just click the link in the description. Once you're there, sign in or create a free account if you don't have one yet. After logging in, you'll land on your main Fusion dashboard. From here, click Connect Repo, then choose Connect GitHub App. It'll prompt you to give Fusion permission to access your repositories. Just follow the steps and allow it. Once that's done, go back to your Fusion dashboard and click React plus Vite. Then choose Edit Starter Templates. Create a new one and name it something like Next.js plus Supabase. Then set it as your default starter template. After that, connect the repository we created earlier. Fusion will automatically link to your repo, scan the files, and recognize that it's a Next.js project. Now your Fusion workspace is fully connected to your code base, which means Every time you create a new project or page using that template, 
it'll automatically use it as the base foundation. So instead of starting from scratch each time, you're building on top of the same Next.js plus Supabase setup, keeping everything consistent and ready to sync straight into your code. After that, we'll head over to Figma and take a look at what we've got here. So we've got a simple dashboard, a sidebar, a few stat cards, and some more cards below. Later on, we'll also be adding a customer page and an inventory page to make it feel more complete. Now, let's move to the Actions tab, search for builder.io, and start it up. Once it's running, it'll ask us to pick which layer we want to export to code. We'll select our dashboard, click Smart Export, and wait for it to process. After exporting, just click to copy and simply press Control V to paste it into the Fusion prompt box in your project. Fusion is the only AI tool that lets you directly use your Figma frames as context for prompts. Isn't that awesome? Make sure we're using the Next.js plus Supabase template we set up earlier, and finally hit Create. Once it's done, Fusion will start generating the structure of our project automatically, setting up the folders, components, and linking everything together so we can start building right away. Once that's done, you can see that we have a working sidebar, some stat cards, and a functional sales chart. Now, when we head over to the Design tab, it works just like a Figma design, meaning we can actually change the layout and style right here inside the dashboard. Pretty cool, right? Now let's move on and create the other pages, the orders, customers, and inventory. After a few prompts and some redesign help from Fusion, our front end is finally ready. So now we've got the dashboard showing key stats, the orders page where we can add, edit, and delete orders, the customers page showing their total purchases and activity, and the inventory page where we can easily manage and update stock. At this point, our dashboard template is looking solid and fully functional, ready to connect with real data. Now, let's click on Pull Request so we can merge this into our GitHub repo. And tada, it's done. Now let's go and see what happens. Here, the builder.io bot automatically creates a pull request description so we can easily understand what's going on. Then, we just scroll down, hit Merge Request, and that's it. Your Figma designs are converted to code, and Fusion generates the rest of your app leveraging your design system, bridging the gap between design and production. But Fusion doesn't just stop at design to code. You can edit logic, connect APIs, and refine your app directly inside Fusion. It also supports attaching PDFs with requirements, uploading reference images, and sharing mockups to keep your team aligned. Plus, you get full VS Code integration, so everything works right inside your editor. And with universal integrations powered by MCP, Fusion connects cleanly across your entire workflow, from design to code all the way to production. Now let's sync our local project to our updated repo, and let's start creating some Supabase tables. First, we're creating the customer's table. This table will store information about each customer, things like their name, email, and phone number. Every customer will automatically get a unique ID. We're also linking each customer to a specific user in the auth.users table using the user ID field, so we can tell which account created that customer. Next, we're creating the products table. This table will hold all the products that each user adds. Just like in the customers table, every product will have a unique ID generated automatically. We're also connecting each product to a user through user underscore ID, so we know who owns which products. Each product will have a name, category, price, and stock count. We're also giving it a status column that defaults to published, which basically means the product is active or visible. There's also an optional image underscore URL for the product image and a created at column that records when the product was added. After that, we're creating the orders table. This is where we'll keep track of all customer orders. Every order will have its own unique ID linked to the user who created it. It also connects to the customer who placed the order using customer underscore ID. We've got a total column for the total price of the order, a status that defaults to pending and a created at column to record when the order was made. Once we've set up the tables, we're enabling row-level security for all three, customers, products, and orders. This is an important security step that makes sure users can only access the rows they're allowed to see. Then, we're adding our security policies. These policies make sure that each user only sees and manages their own data. For example, if a user logs in, they'll only be able to view the customers, products, and orders that belong to them, based on their user underscore ID. And finally, we're creating indexes for the user underscore ID column in all three tables. This makes our queries run much faster 
when we filter or search data by user, which is super helpful as the database grows. So in the end, we've built a clean, secure setup with three main tables, customers, products, and orders, each tied to a user, protected with security rules, and optimized for performance. After that, inside our Supabase folder, create a new file called queries.ts. At the very top of this file, we're going to start by importing our Supabase client. We're importing our Supabase client helper. This create client function is what connects us to our Supabase backend, so we can run queries like fetching, inserting, or updating data. Next, we're defining our data types, or interfaces, which basically describe what each record in our database looks like. Let's start with the user interface. This represents a user account. It has an ID, an email, and optionally a full name and avatar URL. The created at tells us when the user was created. Then we have the customer interface. Each customer is linked to a user underscore ID, meaning which account created that customer. The rest are basic details like name, email, phone, and optional fields like gender and address. Next is the product interface, followed by the order interface. These are defined just like in our Supabase tables to ensure we have proper types for our TypeScript data. There's also this order with customer interface. This one just extends the order type and adds customer info like name and email. So when we fetch orders, we can include basic customer details alongside. After the interfaces, we have a helper function called getCurrentUser. This function simply checks which user is currently logged in through Supabase auth. We'll use it in all our other functions to make sure users can only access their own data. Now we move to the dashboard stats section. We create the client, get the current user, and if no one's logged in, we return null. Then we fetch everything related to that user, customers, orders, and products, all at once using promise.all. From there, we calculate some numbers, total customers, total orders, pending orders, and total revenue. We also get product counts, published products, and total inventory value. Next, we have CRUD operations for customers create, read, update, and delete. We do the same for products. Get products fetches all products for the user. Create product adds a new one. Update product and delete product modify or remove existing products. Finally, we have the orders section. Get orders fetches all orders and includes the customer info by joining it like this. So each order automatically includes the customer's name and email. So overall, this whole file is like the backend logic for your dashboard. And that wraps up our build. With this setup, we can sign up, log in and get redirected to our dashboard, which we built straight from Figma to code using Fusion and refined right inside Fusion. From here, we can add, edit, and delete data through Supabase. We can add products, manage customers, and even check our weekly analytics all in one place. All the full code snippets are available in the description through our code slides, and the complete project is also up on GitHub, linked below. You can also check out the Supabase and Fusion docs for more info, both linked down in the description too. Well, that's it for now, Novus. Thank you for watching.